sana asifiwe bwana asifiwe tena uh, i greet you all my name is isabel nyambura maina i'll be moderating the session that we are about to have uh, we are bringing together young families uh, in our youth fellowship to just discuss matters fellowship matters importance of fellowship in our family unit and how to also raise our children in a godly way with me uh, i have the minors who got married in 2019 i have the gashukias who got married in 2020 and i have the gatuhas who got married in 2019 and i pray that you are going to be blessed with this session and you will get to learn a thing or two and also not forgetting with me is i am joined with our youth evangelist evangelist julius kahara so stay tuned we'll get straight into the conversation that is of the day and uh, maybe we can start with the minors and you will talk about how how fellowship has been for you as a family unit and the experience so far as a family unit. Uh. Oh, so fellowship for us it has been nice. Uh, we have been fellowshipping uh, early in the morning. We have been waking up early in the morning at six. So we read the Bible. Then uh, we discuss about it. We ask questions about it. And uh, it usually takes around uh, 15 to 20 minutes again uh, before covid we usually used to fellowship with our best couple where we used to visit each other and have an overnight fellowship and uh, it was awesome and uh, it has been a nice experience thank you so for us as the gashukias we have some mode of worship and uh, we believe that a family that prays together stays together. So as a family, there are days like we, we have a day, probably uh, on a Tuesday, where we have a Bible study, which we study in details, and we're able to look at various aspects or why God wants to speak at a certain uh, time to us. We also have uh, prayer, prayer like uh, every day, Every morning we want to dedicate our, our, our work to God, we want to dedicate our family. We also want to have that personal talk when it comes with God. So, and we also worship together in the same church, that is uh, PCA Car Farmers. So, it's a way we bring together. So our worship is uh, directed on how can we be together as a family. So that even those who are going to come from us, the children, are going to also step in the same footsteps. So is more of a joined together of worship yeah uh, uh my name is uh, dennis gatuha gituri and with me is uh, my beautiful wife faith gatuha and our daughter taraji mogoni um we are happy first of all to be here and um what I would like to say is that we, we realize that um, in, our th in our two, we are, we are almost going to two years uh, in marriage. And during our wedding, uh, our reverend was quick to tell us that uh, there will be three parties in our marriage. That will be me and my wife and God. Mm -hmm. So God is an important part of our communion. And... Uh, we involve him in everything that we do. And that's why every morning, we, when we wake up, we wake up early. Uh, everybody has his own individual time to pray. But before we leave the house, we, we have to gather all of us together. We pray together and we also read a verse uh -huh. and discuss it. So that way we have been able to maintain our relationship uh, with God. At least we try uh, and also during any other time uh, of the day, we are also happy to discuss uh, matters, uh, salvation matters, uh, how to keep our fire burning in Christ. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Okay. Um, I think what I've, gather I've gathered from all of us is that it is important that the fire keeps burning for Jesus. That no matter the point we are in in life, it is important that 
we are consistent, we are praying together, a family that prays together stays together. Maybe I'll pose the question to Gashukia uh, to represent all of you. Uh, how has that experience been? Because before it was a very individual walk, but then now you've come together as a family. How has the experience been fellowshipping with someone? Uh, so I would say uh, we have been married for around six months now. It is a journey that I really enjoy more so when uh, we encourage each other. So it is something that uh, took me by, I appreciate as, as in the appreciation that comes with worshipping together in such that uh, when I was alone, it was hard to keep the consistency when it came to worshipping or to praying. But now you have someone uh, who keeps reminding you. If they forget, they remind you that uh, babe at Jaomba. And any time that uh, I want to walk out, he has, he st she stops me and tells me we have not yet prayed. So it is, uh, it is a, a way that uh, I say that when we, when we are together, it's easier to worship and to pray together. Like, unlike when you are alone, because uh, sometimes you find yourself, you, you are late. So, utatoka bila takuomba. But now you have someone who will tell you that we need to stay together, we need to read the word together. So, when I was alone, I would forget most of the time. But now when we are together, it's a journey that we have to work together. So, I, it is easier when we are both of us, unlike when I'm alone. Yes. Um, maybe now, then our next question, uh, the Gatuhas and the Miners will answer, and it's with regards to... Like we are bringing up children into this world, we are raising up a generation and we are looking as Christians to raise them up in a godly way, true? Yes. So I'd like to know if there is a plan, as in mnakujanga, mnakapa moja, if there is a way you, are, you want to integrate your children and the children to come into this family of God. Yes. How do you plan to do it? How are you doing it? How? Yes. Okay. Hello there. Uh, okay. For me, is is all about the content of what what content that does the baby? Um, um, what do I say? The content the baby is exposed to. For example, what they are, what are they watching via TV? The, the kids they are they are they are playing around with the language they speak uh what image are, are we portraying as parents to the kid because i believe they take after us so for me is the content and what they hear yes it's all about that mm -hmm. okay. uh, praise god amen yeah um yeah, so for us, <coughs> how we plan to integrate our children, uh, right now we have one, but you know, if God gives us more children, is, uh, you know, apart from taking them to Sunday school and, uh, you know, uh, allowing them to learn with other children, is also for us as parents to also take up this responsibility to also teach them the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we, we won't just leave it to the teachers at Sunday school, we shall also uh, we're also planning to take that responsibility, you know, to uh, read them Bible stories and to teach them about God. So, and also what Regina said about uh, content, we also try to make sure, whether it's cartoons or, or movies, we always make sure that we, we are aware of whatever, you know, she's watching, even at a young age, like now these children know their way around YouTube and, you know, social media. So you have to be careful to shield them from you know, anything ungodly, because that is, uh, I mean, so that they will grow in the, in the ways of God. Amen, amen. And uh, maybe now I'll ask Pasi, because now we uh, will advance Kidogo, how have you done it? Because and all this, how now have you brought your children, your son and daughter into the kingdom of God? Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Hi. So the first thing that I have to say is that it starts from zero. 
a start from this zero. When we quoted uh, in courtship, we started fellowship. Even after uh, marrying, that trade, that culture continued. After that, the child came. The first child came. The more responsibility were added. And uh, even at uh, that time, uh, uh, I can say fellowship and uh, worship start uh, that, that tender age. Uh, we started uh, talking to that kid when he was, uh, or it was in the mother's womb, talking the love of God, the issues of God in the mother's womb, even after coming out from, uh, from mother's womb, when we gave birth, uh, the, the first word or name that we introduced this kid to was Jesus. Jesus. We kept on saying Jesus, 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 until it is thick to his mind. Till now, uh, uh, he is able to, know, to say Jesus. Even the second born is able to say Jesus. Then, in the fellowship, the, the culture never stopped. We continued praying together. In the morning, praying together in the evening. So, and because in the morning we, we wake up early, uh, we pray together, both of us. But in the evening, before the children sleep, we must pray and lead the word of God. Like the, uh, the time of pandemic, I remember we read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation together as family. And uh, it brings more bold, more togetherness, and uh, even knowing each other more. So I can say that Worship is togetherness and bringing everybody in the boat. Like now, my children, if you don't pray, they will remind you. They will tell you, we have not, we have not prayed. We have not prayed. And we must de de demarcate the prayer of food and the prayer of the, the general prayer. So they know the prayer of food and the, gen the, the general prayer. And they compete. I am going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. So it is time to introduce even our children on this worship experience. Thank you very much. Um, maybe just randomly someone can answer. Is it possible to shield our children from the world that is right now? Like so many things are happening. You will train up a child at home Labda aende shule ama atoke inje kucheza na watoto and then arudi alisikia jinambaya. So how do you bring them back to this one system that this is what is right? Yeah. Mondarita, I see you are looking unto me because <laughs> I, I know you know that I'm more experienced and for sure I'm more, more experienced. And I will say this. Uh, every exposure it's a character to a child. So you expose that child to school, it becomes a culture to that or, or character to, to that child. Because I can see many times you tried, like now, the curriculum that we used when we were in, in, in that tender age is not the curriculum they are, use, they are using. So when you try to correct that kid to the way that you are taught, he or she will rebuke you and correct you to the way they are taught. So any exposure to, any ch to, to the kid become a character. So when that kid go out and pray with others, that kid will come and use the words, do the thing that they are doing. So it is you as a parent to correct that kid right, right away, right now. Uh, sometimes I call even the friends, I buy sweets, uh, the friends of that kid, and if when we, I buy sweets, we, we talk, we talk. And you make bold with the, with the friends of that kid. And uh, 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 that helped me to know even what these kids believe, and even what they are, they are socialized with. So it is time, or we, we are able, that you are able to be able to see what you are feeding or your child is, is fed with. Come to gadget. 
it is high time also to know what the child is feeding with. Like now, uh, uh, YouTube. These children, they know YouTube, even at the tender age. They know YouTube, they do cartoon, and they, they keep on saying, Daddy, I want your phone, I want cartoon. So you remove the data, and then you remove the Wi-Fi, and then you, 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 you download the, the things that are productive to that kid. And that kid is fed with only the things that you are choosing and dictating to her. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we are receiving insights. So maybe our next question, I'll start from uh, the Gashukias. Is, uh, at one point there was courtship and then uh, my panel, it an incorrect Nikimis uh, stage, Sindio. Uh, at one point there was courtship, then there was the uh, dating or dating courtship, then marriage came, and now there are responsibilities that have come. So how do you stay consistent? Or is there consistency in the way you fellowship as a family? Or how do you stay consistent when you've come together as a family with responsibilities and everything? Yes. Um, praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, what I can say is that for us, fellowship did not start after marriage. Ah, it started okay. way before. Okay. So in courtship, we, st we used to have fellowship still. So it is a continuous thing for us. Just that at times, you find like, maybe both of our, uh, what what you were doing back then, or how you were thinking back then is not the same. Because before we would think in a perspective of youth, now we have to think in the perspective of husband and wife, and now the parents, down to the parents. And consistency-wise, we have dates. We have a day in a week to, like, if we are reading a certain book, we, we talk about it. If today we were reading about Esther, we discuss the next two, the next week of the month of the the next day of the week we are going to talk about a certain book so in between the week you have your time to read so by the time you are sitting down to read the bible the the book that we had chosen it becomes easier secondly i can say that we complement each other because when he's reading the word and when I'm reading, the way I see it and the way he views are two different things. So that discussion makes you feel like you want to read more. And prayer-wise, we, we, we learn each and every day. I cannot say that you are perfect because every day is a journey for us. Every day. I ha it's not like... In courtship, I will just read or wake up any time. Now I have to consider him. <laughs> In everything I'm doing, I have to consider his time. I have to consider what we are reading. I have to consider the thoughts or the reading. Because, uh, like, let me give an example of the book of Esther that we read recently. And the way I was reading Esther, I would only look at Esther. But now we have to start from Vashti to how it came to Esther. So let me say, for us, maintaining, maintaining the consistency, it's because we, we started way before. And we hope that even to our coming generation, we'll pass on the culture. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, for us, uh, I think uh, before we got married, each one of us, this a way we used to, uh, each one of us, like, uh, this a way I used to do my fellowship, this a way she used to, her, to do her fellowship. Now that we came in together, uh, you know, we have to do things together as wife and husband. So uh, when we fellowship together, uh, we encourage each other, 
we remind each other and uh, by doing so you find that uh, there are days when you feel you're down you feel like you you, you don't want to do it but your partner is there to help you uh, to talk to you and to encourage you that things will get better uh, whatever that is going through that I mean that whatever that you're going through so by being together uh, it helps because uh, when I'm down she is there for me yeah what I would say is that um, uh, there's a question about worship but I would like to look at it holistically not just about worship because uh, when we got together everybody was used to doing his own things his own way so now that we are two of us uh, I think it's a matter of uh, looking into other person's interest and try to accommodate each other so in terms of fellowship uh, we have to we had to check on the time that is most appropriate for both of us mm -hmm. so we try to accommodate each other and I think uh, so far we have been doing well so I think it's a matter of accommodation you might never have it your way but as long as you're looking at the interest of your partner then uh, then you'll be able to have a, a balance to strike a balance Thank you. i can add on that and i say that uh, also communication means a lot communication is the key to everything because you may think that you are dictating that uh, like me who is uh, like Parsi, the, uh, i dictate in my family and the, the other opponent they, they are the, the other way now. It is time to communicate and they come in agreement. Mm -hmm. okay. um, maybe as we wind up, Pasi, you can touch on the importance of fellowship as a family, not just in your individual life, but also as a family unit, because we have recognized that it is important. Fellowship is important. But now there are those one, two, three things maybe you can touch on. The, the fellowship in the family uh, is the time to board. Mm -hmm. That is one. Time to board. Because you have gone so many places the whole day, you are busy, and uh, there, there is no time to communicate, no talking in the phone. But when you are in the fellowship, it is time to board. Another thing is time to understand each other. There is time that uh, you, you try to, to, to understand each other, but when he, she, she is at work, I am at work, you, you, it's difficult to understand each other. But when we are fellowshipping, it is time to understand each other. Then we grow together. It is time to grow. Grow spiritually, grow even, uh, even uh, socially, and many other things. We try to grow in fellowship. There are so many things that I can say that are, uh, emanate from fellowshipping together but uh, we can say that uh, uh, even children come to know God in fellowshiping together. Like my, my son, who is four years, he can narrate to you the story of Jesus, how he was born, and how he died and lost again because of that fellowship together. So it is high time we as young family, we cultivate the culture of fellowshiping together. Um, for our young congregation, maybe it's important for, as we are about to finish, to just have parting shots from every couple that is here, to just encourage the people who are out there, aspiring to get into families and also watching to see how this generation pans out. Eh, Kosababu, there are so many examples in the world, but we are in the kingdom of God and that is how life happens for us in the kingdom of God. So we'll start from there and just parting shot to our young congregation. Yeah. So yeah, take it okay. away. First of all I want to say thank you for giving us a chance. I am a parting shot is uh, Jesus is all Jesus is the business. Like we can't do without him. Like when you wake up, when you go to your daily activities, it's all about God. So when you commit everything to God, then leave the less to Him. He's going to work out for you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, for me, I uh, will say that uh, prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer works wonders. And to the young people out there, uh, do not be afraid uh, about marriage. It's not hard. Uh, just, uh, just go ahead. Then the communication is the key. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, to discuss as a young couple. What I can say is that it is doable as long as you know what is your priority. If your priority is God, it is so doable. And if your priority is to make it happen, nothing is hard. And always put God first. Yeah. I would also say that uh, when you come to worship, eh, it means that there is love. So if love is cultivated as a family, so it means that that family will grow together. So I want to encourage that uh, love brings about worship. So if the, you out there, as the young couples, you are led by love, definitely worship will come in. Because it say, if God says that where two or more are gathered, the presence of the Lord is there. So I would encourage you that even as you are quoting, start with love, build love, and worship comes automatically. So I would encourage the young generation that we have or the youth that we have out there to cultivate love and worship and fellowship will Amen. come automatically. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay, for me what I'd like to tell other young couples is that um, we just keep at it, especially on the issue of raising children. We just do our best to raise them in a godly way. And also when it comes to prayer, when you feel weak as a couple, you can always reach out to, let's say, like your best couple. They can pray with you on certain issues. It's also something we have done. Uh, it's a specific issue that, that we feel we need someone to help us in prayer. We always reach out. Uh, you can also reach out to someone in authority spiritually. Uh, so, yeah, so that has helped us. But uh, the grace of God is always sufficient. So when we look to him and we focus on him and we trust him, eventually everything works out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, what, uh, my parting shot would be uh, for every couple, like what we do, I think uh, wisdom is uh, very important. So I think let us seek wisdom from uh, wherever we can, wherever wisdom can be found, from the Word of God, from um, mentors, from uh, books. Let us seek wisdom so that we can be able to make uh, sound decisions with regard to the family. There are so many, and uh, that is my prayer every day, that God gives me wisdom, that I can be able to make uh, the right decisions and uh, timely and right decisions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe pass it. To me, first of all, is to thank the sick couples because of accepting the call today. And uh, this is show the, showing to young people that uh, marriage is doable. Another thing that I will say is uh, marriage is sweet. So, young people, don't engage yourself with the other relationships that are evil enter into marriage and marriage is so sweet and that is where people grow together so may god bless you and do you good okay. um, thank you very much for participating and also agreeing to be part of this youth week uh, to our viewers back at home i pray that uh, this couples have blessed you in one way or another and my takeaway from all this is John 17 verse 3 and it says this is eternal life that we may know God the, the one true God the one who was sent that is Christ and this is life for every person in the family of God that life is all about knowing God in marriage in singlehood and even in the next phase of our lives it is all about God I pray that you continuously participate in our youth week uh, joining us for the daily morning devotions, 
our environmental day, our evening worship sessions and uh, keeping in mind that the word of God is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So be blessed and God loves you.